Hello and sorry I did upload this, there was an audio issue, it didn't come through so I'm just going to uh, do it again and uh, basically fact checking claims about Baalbek which are essential to certain narratives in there and so uh, some of these foundation claims, the Romans couldn't cut the blocks at Baalbek, the Romans couldn't move the blocks at Baalbek, the stones at Baalbek were moved uphill, uh, the Romans didn't leave stones unfinished in quarries and a few other chestnuts that uh, 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 the foundations to what is essentially a house of cards. So firstly, the Romans could not cut the stones at Baalbek. Uh, let's go to uh, Pompey's Pillar as it's called in Alexandria in Egypt built by the Romans to celebrate a victory over a local rebellion there. You get an idea of the scale of this particular column in regards to the size of the people. There's another angle. It's, uh, pretty, it, it is the world's largest column. It's a single piece again. Uh, claims in regards to the uh, Baalbek uh, uh, temple of Jupiter and stuff. Well, they're actually quite, you know, so columns maybe, but this is the world's largest column and Corinthian capital on top. It's of granite from Aswan in, uh, Aswan in Egypt or um, Mont Cordianus possibly, but down in southern Egypt. There we get an idea of just the column itself and if we include the capital and the plinth, but we're still um, looking at uh, over 70 feet, from, not including the plinth, just the column and the capital on the top there, well over uh, 70 feet. And so uh, the, the Romans could not cut stones such as the trilophons in the foundation wall or, or the un, unmoved, still connected to the earth stone such as the pregnant mother. Uh, we draw a comparison between the two, we see the scale of this. Now apparently the Romans couldn't cut a, a rectangular block, yet they could cut uh, a, a column, a rounded column with this capital there on top. This claim that the Romans could not cut those blocks uh, are patently absurd and ridiculous. If I can cut a 12 foot block, why can't I cut a, a larger block? This is really beyond reason and logic because what's stopping us? We have a, with a, cut, with a builder's square and a string, you can carve this out. You can, you know, if you can carve a small block, you can carve an infinitely large block. There is no magic point where it stops being possible to do this. The issue is then moving it, but to say they could not cut these blocks is just on itself logically silly and really is not worth saying, but the fact is that they actually did do uh, actually greater, uh, better work than, than carving this block and those saying it obviously don't know or are suppressing the Roman technology to protect this narrative. It is. It really is silly just on its own. Why, why is there a magic size where you can't cut blocks all of a sudden? No, it's just silly and they actually did better than that. But uh, Pompey's Pillar and Alexandria come down from here, uh, basically at the same quarry as the famous unfinished obelisk in um, down here in Aswan. And just a little bit further up we have the Temple of Karnak, which is a later temple, not old, you know, but what we have there is uh, there were obelisks moved there uh, by the Egyptians, which is you know fantastic. They were able to move these obelisks up to Karnak. However, uh, the obelisk that was there was 450 tons, and it was moved to Rome by the Romans. Well recorded. They described all of these things. So the obelisk was moved roughly just under half a mile from the Karnak to the. Uh, to, and then put on a barge at the Nile, moved up the Nile 700, uh, several hundred miles, then moved on to another barge at Alexandria, transported across the sea, taken to the Roman port, Portus, and then taken 16 miles inland across rugged terrain. Uh, so the famed trilophons at Baalbek come from two-thirds of a mile away and they weigh 900 tonne, essentially it's half that weight. So uh, again, claims made about Roman tech. Uh, so the 350 ton stones, which until recently were not, uh, well, now we have a comparison. So just, you know, where you see it there, it's pretty bloody impressive, uh, this move. Now, until recently, I think maybe some are still hanging on to it. They'll say that the Romans could not move these seven blocks underneath the trial upon 350 tons. This has been repeated by others. I'm not, uh, v not verbaling people. This is and has been a consistent repeat. And this is so easy to debunk because when people say Romans could not do this, this implies they have some knowledge of Roman technology and achievements. Clearly they do not. Absolutely they do not. It is actually cringeworthy to say that. Now this is half the weight of that particular block. Now this block again, apparently Romans couldn't carve a rectangular block, but well, they, they can and they did. They did actually much better than that. And so uh, this 
stone, the obelisk, uh, uh, Flavian obelisk, uh, the, uh, uh, the other second largest obelisk in Rome, this is the largest obelisk in Rome, they were actually uh, re-erected and moved by Pope Sixtus V using the exact same te technology as described by uh, ancient Roman chroniclers, even shown in carvings. They celebrated this move. It was a big thing. The Romans liked to talk about what they did and, you know, and, and show it off. It's uh, well recorded. So the ladder and obelisk, 450 tons. It's heavier than this apparently unable to move stone. Uh, again, w w what level of research, what, w how the hell can you get away with saying that? And then that the Romans could not cut these stones, again, absolutely absurd, and that they could not move this particular stone. Well, so let's compare, so can, given the added level of difficulty to move these and onto a bar, river barge, onto an ocean going barge, and then to move it over 32 times the distance that the... Uh, the, the famous Baalbek trilophons were moved. So two thirds of a mile, and as we'll see later across uh, either essentially level ground, possibly even moved downhill despite the claims. We'll examine that in a moment. But so again, all the Romans need to have done was to double up their equipment to use an extra lifting tower, to use twice as many rope, twice as many workers to save at the Romans. And again, a definitive claim that the Romans could not move or, or even lift this stone is 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 absurd and it is not based on any realistic fact just like the one that they could not cut these stones so again this is uh, easily fact checked it is it is pure bunkum pure pure bunkum and they did not actually move a stone of 900 tons but they did move an obelisk of 450 tons much further uh, much cross cross much more difficult terrain and again this is either ignored Actually, it's not spoke. It is ignored. It's you know, I I have not seen this discussed on any of the apparent expert researchers who talk about Baalbek. So to say the Romans couldn't cut the stones or move the stones is actually a baseless claim. To say they couldn't cut the stones is entirely ridiculous. It is mis misinfotainment to protect the dogma. Another persistent claim, uh, and again easily fact checked, is that these stones could not be moved on rollers. Well, that is just again uh, absurd. The famous red cedars of Lebanon. You can again uh, construction need to, uh, people involved in construction need to know the uh, the weight limits and tolerances of certain timbers. This is easily again a couple clicks away can be checked. This is the crushing strength, and I'm presuming uh, that this is the like the uh, along the grain, which is so the, the the main strength of a tree runs you know along the length of it. So, however, that would essentially mean that. Uh, a little over a square metre could actually support this whole weight. So if this guy, you know, that person, imagine their one hand standing out and they did a circle. So that arc created by one arm's length is more than enough to support the weight on uh, with the grain. Now, when you when you have, now if you tilt it sideways to make a roller, you have less capability of, uh, now I can't remember the exact proportion, but it, it's uh, um, even at... Uh, 10 to 1, which it is not that uh, high, uh, or not that low, depending, a surprisingly few amount of rollers could support that weight, uh, very low. And so, again, a few rollers spaced out or even rollers up together. So absolutely untrue that rollers would, would, would crush under the weight of this stone. It, again, easily fact-checked. So you're starting to see a pattern which emerges from here. Now, one, one of the other most... Uh, repeated claims in regards to this is that the Romans didn't leave unfinished blocks in their quarry, therefore the Romans couldn't have done this because they wouldn't have left a block. Now they, they would also tell you that the Romans couldn't cut this, which is again an absolutely ridiculous statement. Now to, as an example, let's just go uh, ancient Roman quarry. We have sites dedicated to this. There are many, you know, if you look ancient quarry techniques, again, you can get information. It is two clicks away. We see, go to the images, and we will find such as Mons Claudianus, places uh, here in Greece, but there is in Turkey, there are in Spain. Uh, it is, was van, and it is still standard practice now. Basically, it's try and find the quarry that doesn't have unfinished blocks in them is the theme. Now even when we see the quarrying techniques, we know these quarrying techniques, which were also again written, described about, we even know the, the wages and conditions of quarry workers. So this again is easily uh, checked and well again it's hard to explain the, the lack of, of checking or, or the suppression of information let's call it either way. So 
uh, again, very easy to check. Um, I'm amazed, you know, you, you literally just got, it's, you have Google access, you know, but uh, so the Romans definitely did leave unfinished stones in there and we also see these, uh, so for them to have left a stone um, unfinished, a large stone is is absolutely true. It is, and it's common practice from China through to uh, uh, Britain for these ancient quarries to have unfinished stones uh, of various levels. We know their techniques. So this type of cutting to get little, so to make a larger block and then to cut smaller blocks again, uh, standard quarry practice in the ancient world and even in the modern world. So again, this is pure bunkum. Now, uh, this is from, this is the actual museum at Baalbek. I find it, you know, well, pretty shameful. Again, I don't expect much from the History Channel, but this idea that these boom cranes, you need this many modern cranes to lift this stone. No, this is absolutely fundamentally untrue. One single boom crane could lift this. The, 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 the issue is not modern cranes. It's the quality of research and information, misinformation surrounding this and to protect and project this mystery onto something which is not mysterious. And not only that, a crane such as this is the worst type of crane for lifting. They're good for their uh, for their mobility. They're also uh, good to get into tricky places. And for instance, if you want to lift a pool into a backyard over a house, this is the type of crane that you use. This is not the uh, heavy lifting crane. This is not. Uh, th this is why they don't use them in heavy lifting uh, construction, ship shipbuilding, and stuff like this. Because this is actually the worst type of crane to use. So again, this is misinformation bunkum. Okay, the stones at Baalbek were moved uphill. Uh, here's an aerial view. We'll, uh, now that's where we have the Baalbek Temple. Now these are the, the uh, walls there, which have these famous trilophon stones in there. They get an idea of these stones. There we see the pregnant mother and the uh, stone of Jabil, as they're called, I believe. But now, uh, and uh, so, so the emphasis is that these stones were not only moved two thirds a mile, which is relatively well, minuscule in comparison to the Lateran obelisk, for instance, but it uh, pushed uphill to push this. Okay, it's even more impossible. But how? What is this uphill now? I uh, I'll show you in a in a moment. But we can get the uh, elevation of where these stones are and to the temple there. And so we can go. We can do this on Google Earth now. Down here where I'm circling, you get the elevation. And so we can. You just hold your cursor over the area, and it shows you the uh, elevation and the final site and the elevation there. And there are dedicated sites to do this topographical uh, maps. Maps you can, you know, you just drag your cursor onto the site, uh, choose satellite view. But this is just one example. So just uh, so again, this backs up the uh, Google um, Earth as well. So what we have these elevations I'm going to show you in in the images are not uh, well. They're they're accurate, you know. And you can again check these in other sites. So for instance. Uh, 1138 and the uh, 1131 so uh, actually I gave them a little bit too high but you see what I mean 1131 or 1140 and we're, there we see the elevation as on the approach but also the temple site itself so we can check these these numbers here I'm providing a, you can verify these for yourself on Google Earth on any other number of sites so we have this uh, it's two thirds of a mile away we get an idea of how much lower that has to go up uh, uh, the the quarry itself, you know, this, these are the low points of the quarry where the, these famous stones are. The actual quarry itself extends much higher, and this is just one quarry in the area. And so, these portions of the quarry are actually higher, a level two or higher than the final temple. And given that the foundation stones would have been laid first, logic would probably dictate that most likely they would come from the upper portion of the quarry, not as they dug down. That's unknown, but. It's uh, again to say it's uphill definitively is well now let's assume that it was from the lowest portion of that quarry the stone of a pregnant mother most of the quarry is actually higher or above but let's assume that it was uh, firstly we can uh, just follow the contours where the, the road currently still goes but uh, for the Romans to to build a road or a ramp directly to there is another possibility of moving it Romans were famous for the quality of their roads uh, hundreds of thousands of kilometers of road network they built. The ramp of Masada is a classic example of how quickly they could build a ramp. This is a very, very steep ramp. This is not at all necessary because the uphill of Baalbek is not actually uphill. Okay, so it is very easy to get the elevation data from the lowest point of a quarry, which is down here with the stone of a pregnant mother and these others. And 
you know, uh, okay, for instance, now we see the quarry location now, even just if you, you know, use your, you go over and you put the, the you know, there we see the stone. Now, this is the quarry. Now, if you look at the elevation again down here, you can see how this same whole quarry region also extends up to 1150 uh, meters and over. Uh, this portion of a quarry, uh, if stone, uh, if, if uh, larger stones were quarried from there, no one knows exactly where they come from to definitively say that they come from this part of a quarry or the lowest part of a quarry, no one can say how it, so therefore we need to be inclusive of all this info. So for instance, this upper uh, portion would be 1160 metres, the lowest would be 1130 metres, and this is basically within a stone's throw distance of of the other sites. And so uh, again, we can see, you know, we know that, the, you know, even you know, the usual suspects surprisingly admit to this and point this out, and yet they sort of missed a bigger point. But again, this, these quarry portions uh, would be level two or higher if they come from here, and that they're on the upper part of a quarry. It's not a, a an, not an insane assumption to make that they the first stones down would be the first stones out and pointing to this area. But again, no one knows exactly where they come from. But let's assume, let's assume that they come from the lowest portion. Okay, two thirds of a mile, and of course we have, or we could just follow the topographical map where the road still goes now. And again, we have a very gentle angle leading up to there. How gentle is this angle? Well, firstly, let's uh, uh, with this road. So either way, it's not really. But uh, now the Roman roads were fantastic. They're, they're still raved about today. They're an engineering marvel, along with the roads, the aqueducts, and the drains. Uh, in antiquity, they were praised and, just, and talked about how important they were, even by neighbouring cultures, neighbouring uh, empires. And the, uh, the Roman ramp at Masada is just a classic example of how much they could do in such a short time, the Roman engineers. They, the, uh, the legions were engineers as much as they were soldiers. Every night they would make an encampment with uh, fortress walls around it. They did amazing work, again, really basic Roman stuff. So let's assume that these trilophons come from the lowest portion of the quarry, such as here is about, and that's, you know, that's an assumption. If they, they could come from uphill, if I were even just a short distance away from the same quarry or level ground. But assuming that this was, uh, the angle would be actually 1.2 degrees on being, 1.2 degrees would actually bring you up higher here. But anyway, so uh, less than one degree or one degree, and so this, this is a this this is the ramp that would be needed to be built, or we could just follow the contours just as the current road goes. So, either way, this this is the uphill angle, which is emphasises adding to the difficulty. It is essentially zero, and this is an exaggerated. If it was even at one point two degrees, uh, this is more than one point two degrees angle. This is uh, so again the uphill is is if it was technically true from this bottom portion uh, from that low point which okay we don't exactly know where what point so it could you know it just as likely could have come from a downhill slope or a level slope but if it come from this lowest portion the the angle is so slight as to say so the salt flats in Utah are famous for being flat or here the Nullarbor plain is famously flat that's what we, but Technically, they're not actually flat. They have the, these slight angles and grades to it. Water will run off in a certain direction. So I could then say, well, the Utah salt uphills by that these very same definitions. So this uphill angle, even if technically true at the lowest point, if it come from there, really, really is, a, is a, essentially an untruth to present it as an uphill and present it as if it makes it harder. So they technically could have come downhill they could come from level ground or even at the lowest point the angle is so slight to, as to be in any realistic terms to be effectively flat because the the uh, added difficulty is uh, again effectively zero at one degree it doesn't really add anything to it and alternatively alternatively they could have come from downhill so why not say that why not say they were brought downhill or why not say level ground no because it needs to be said that they'll brought uphill and this in itself even if true in this worst case scenario is a misrepresentation of the truth to present really a false argument in regards to this. So again, these uh, 
these can be fact-checked. Now, the Romans would boast about their achievements. So this was a famous plaque, and it was also repeated around the empire. Augustus claimed these victories and these achievements. Uh, even though, as is so often the case, the emperor didn't physically do them himself. It was actually Agrippa who was the architect and even paid for it as well. So, uh, but that's the case. You know, the emperor doesn't get his hands dirty. He says, go and do this, it gets done. And the people who do it, uh, his underlings don't get as much credit. So, but, uh, but just as an example, the Romans put their stamp on everything. There is no Roman records of this moving their stone. This is very unusual for the Romans. They had a habit of boasting uh, of it. So there is no proof that the Romans built this. And and anyone who says that, they, that, that you can prove the Romans did it, well, there is no evidence of it. Where is your evidence? However, there, uh, there is no smoking gun record to say it was there prior to the Romans. There are no record. No one knows. And so for anyone to say definitively that it was built by this person or that person is untrue and so if when you say the Romans built it the usual suspects will say oh no, no, no evidence of that yet they're able to project you know and say oh but it is you know it is evidence of, of a lost high technology this type of stuff when it absolutely is not so um, these claims are simply untrue because it's, the records don't exist prior to the Romans and the Romans didn't take credit for it as well which is uh, is unusual uh, for, for them so we don't know who built them and and I'm not claiming that the Romans built them, but I am claiming that the, the claims made as to what Romans could not do uh, and the claims about uphill and that the Romans could not cut these stones are fundamentally untrue, in some cases ridiculously untrue. Uh, only way I can understand these claims and the passion and the, and the certainty which is projected when it doesn't, when it's not the Romans, it's lost high technology, lost high civilization. That said, with some certainty, and if you don't admit it, you have your head up your derriere. Well, come on, no, it uh, runs two ways. So we know that the establishment gatekeepers protect the dogma, but this is a two-way street where you know those who would, you know, rightfully question some of the. Uh, uh, the ethics, let's call it, uh, in regards to people such as Zawi Hawass. Yet this doesn't work the opposite direction. This is snake oil uh, misinfotainment. So these claims, the Romans, to begin with, the, uh, the Romans could not cut those stones. That is, in, in, uh, not only, you don't even need to show the examples as I showed with the, for instance, Pompey's pillar. Um, it is just a, a logically ridiculous statement to make because if you can cut a small stone, you can cut a large stone. There is no limit to stone cut you know it the issue is about then moving it so again that is a furphy but however the romans actually did nicer work more you know a regular stone or a column with a corinthian capital come on this is granite they moved at a huge distance uh the romans never moved a 900 ton stone but to definitive definitively say once again that they could not do it uh it, it relies on excluding this important information about the stones that they actually uh did make and given the fact that you really that they did move a 450 ton stone, and I may remind you, they said that this is impossible, even though the Romans actually did better. This is an example of the research or of the credibility around these issues. It is so easy to check, and yet it is excluded. So all they had to do was double it up, and they moved it over a massive distance. So two thirds of a mile, as opposed to uh, 17 miles across much more difficult terrain, including a, a journey across the Mediterranean Ocean. Uh, and again, uh, exquisite records of how they did it. These were replicated la later by Pope Sixtus V at a time when they were still using ancient technology that available to ancient peoples before them. So the, the lift that was to bring it back up by Sixtus V was ancient technology. It wasn't done in ancient times, but it was just a replication of ancient technology. All you need to do is double up and have a second lifting tower. So again, the distance of this move illustrates the fact that they could do uh, this move. Now, uh, again, you just got to double up. It, you know, again, it's this, these claims are just um, ridiculous. Now, that wooden rollers cannot check this. On on what basis did you check? Or are you just asserting this because you want to believe it? Well, you're asserting it because you want to believe it because the fact is that the rollers could support this weight, actually surprising you few amount of rollers using the famous local cedars of Lebanon. So again, this is just, uh, again, um, 
there is a pattern to this. Now, even the argument, well, Romans, this, again, this is point, this is absolutely, not is it a baseless, actually illogical assertion. It shows a complete lack of, of not just ancient quarrying techniques, but modern quarrying techniques. Again, how, how can you say this, that this, and again, the connection, well, you couldn't lift it with modern cranes and this, well, no, this is again, zero, re this, you know, um, I can't believe that a genuine person who, you know, who just, you have a search engine. You have a search engine. You can check this. And why is it not checked? Because it sells. It's profitable. And it, but it is essentially bunk. And of course, uh, the stones being moved uphill. If from the lowest point of a quarry, again, technically yes, but there is no evidence to say it come from that portion. If it come from the bulk of that particular quarry, it would be level or above ground. So it's actually more reasonable to assume that it come from a from downhill slope or a level slope. And even if it was, even if it was at this, uh, uh, the lowest point, the angle is so small to emphasize it as, you know, again, uh, mechanical advantage or easy equations to this. These are, you know, laws built into nature, you know, uh, and so this incline really doesn't, is, is insignificant. And again, this is an exaggerated view of what the ramp would look like. So that, uh, and again, building roads and, and ramps, a, a two-thirds of a mile ramp is said, again, to be impossible Roman technology. It's, uh, that is f fundamentally ridiculous. It, it, that is like big deal to them. They could, they could do that with their hands tied behind their back. And they did, you know, the, the extent, the, the size, the speed of, their ro of how they built the, their roads and their ramps and the way that they're able to survey and level ground is just fundamentally flawed these are you know if that same logic was applied well we should be correcting the utah salt uphills or the nullarbor mountains instead of calling it the nullarbor plain there is no evidence that the romans uh built this there is no evidence that it existed before the romans either and so this is an important thing not not featured so we don't know that the romans did it but to say that they could not do it is a uh absolute misrepresentation of of easily verifiable checkable truth now even oh but the, the precision of which these stones were built together again look at a, uh, a roman stonework and this you know you can't fit a, a pin or a piece of paper well the romans did that too that was like standard amongst romans as well sometimes because they would plaster over you would have um you know less accurate work but still you know um such as at the Colosseum, whatever. But then again, that's sort of like cherry picking one example of where it's not done super accurate and saying this is an example of all Roman stone construction. But well, again, you could just look at Roman stone masonry and that this level of fine structure, you know, f uh, can't fit a, a, a pin into it. Again, Romans did that all the time. It's not unusual at all. It is not even, uh, it's barely worth mentioning because it is so common. And so, uh, yeah, uh, this is not fact-checked. This is, you know, this is a bunk. It is, by, it's a paradigm. It, when it works one way, yes, then it's true. Oh, then it was a Roman wall. So, for instance, uh, at Bob, oh, we know these were Roman walls. This is an example of Roman tech. But when it doesn't suit them, oh, well, that's not Roman. You know, well, okay, is there, do you have evidence that this was built, by, that these was built by Romans? How do you, why is it perfectly acceptable to call this portion of a wall Roman, but it's perfect, and it's not, not acceptable to say it's this portion, and this is, you know, again, well within Roman work. So, uh, the, the bunk which surrounds Baalbek is is monumental. It's megalithic, you know, no no pun intended. And there is a snake oil misinformation industry that goes into that. People who call themselves truth community and researchers uh, making statements about Roman capability uh, is is an example of the lack of information or possibly even the intentional misdirection to protect uh, a narrative which is clearly and easily fact checked and. And yet, even when they know, they still go on about it and still defend it. I can't understand it. I will have nothing of this cult. Truth is a higher ordeal. It is not a community.